Would I be the a-hole if I left my fiancé destitute? It might not be the right state of mind, but I had to get this off my chest. Two days ago, I came back from basketball a little early. I overheard my fiancé Jane tell her friend that she's settling for me. This friend just got out of a relationship. I don't know what they were talking about before, but I just learned Jane saying that after all the a-holes she dated, settling for me will be good for her. She then went on to describe my job and all the perks of being with me. And love is apparently not on the list. Hearing this kind of broke me, and I just stood in place dumbfounded. I don't even think she even loves me. For context, we live in a beach house that I bought as a total gut job and renovated it myself. And I have several other properties that are all rented out. I work in property insurance from home and do house flips on the side. I'm satisfied with what I've accomplished so far in my life. All of this was worth mentioning to Jane, but not how much I loved her. How much time we spent together. Not how I tried to be supportive of her goals and ambitions. How she wanted for nothing. I'm not going to lie, I was in a bad place. Maybe still am. I spent all of the last night going through her messages. I knew her password. I just never looked. Well, it's a pretty common thing for her to say. Pretty much all of her friends know what's up. Jane wants a nice normal guy after all the a-holes she dated. She wants a drama-free life where she'll be taken care of. Every time I read what she really thought about me, it was like another needle was being jammed in my heart. My first reaction was to yell at her and confront her about it. My second reaction was to make her suffer like I am. My dear Jane, the love of my life, I thought, doesn't work right now. She quit to be a real estate agent. I don't know, maybe she wanted to learn more about real estate. Maybe she thought her looks would get her by. She doesn't work right now. Zero. She also lives in my house. She decorated it and certainly put her touches on everything. But my name is on a title. Just mine. Her car is technically mine too. She didn't qualify for financing on her own and she just had to have a Beamer. So I co-signed it. I can probably make a case that's my car. We don't have joint accounts. Thank the almighty himself, because she did ask, and I pay her cards right now. I want to just show her the texts, throw her things in garbage bags and put her out on the street. Would I be the a-hole if I did that? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Never accept being Mr. You'll Do until something better comes along. Not Mr. Right, just missed her right now. There's no worse feeling than someone settling for you. The guy sounds kind and caring too. He wants a real connection, and she wants a comfortable life. If only she had really chased love, she could have found it with this guy. But if she doesn't feel a real connection, she was going to try to leave him destitute in the future. I just hope he tells her he feels like he was settling for her, and she deserves more. Not the a-hole. You weren't leaving her destitute. Think of it as you leaving her with exactly what she brought into the relationship. You're not married. You don't have kids. You saw love, and she saw a piggy bank. She didn't quit her job to try something else. That was her excuse, so that she could get you to support her jobless butt. And if she had a shred of self-awareness, she would realize that she was the one being settled for. The level of narcissism on people like her is insane. If all you bring to a relationship is looks, which fade, and a willingness to be intimate, you're not a catch in the relationship. Exactly. Like 80% of the population out there have decent looks and a willingness to be intimate. That woman is not special in any way, shape, or form. And the willingness to be intimate will also fade, usually pretty quickly after the wedding. If all she wants is comfort and money, and she is settling for him, I'm positive the intimacy will fade almost instantly after she's got her hooks into the money. And now for the mini update. Wow, I did not expect so many responses. Thank you everyone for your advice and kind words. I will talk to Jane sometime over the weekend. I think she picked up that something was up. I didn't call her from work like I usually do, and last couple of nights I made an excuse that I was beat and went to bed pretty early. I'll try to read as many replies and provide more information. But I wanted to clarify a couple of things. Regardless of how crappy I feel, I didn't like people calling Jane nasty names. It's partly my fault. I didn't give enough detail. Before quitting, she had a decent enough job. She's not good at managing money at all, but she would buy stuff for the house or gifts for me on special occasions. I never thought of her as a gold digger. She talked to me about quitting and trying to be a real estate agent. 
She told me she liked the freedom of the profession, and I tried to be supportive. Secondly, I don't think I misunderstood her meaning. Maybe she didn't mean it as a negative, but the messages were crystal clear. She settled for me. Next story. Am I the a-hole for breaking up with my pregnant girlfriend because I don't want to be a father? I-25 male had been with my now ex-23 female for a little over three months. I always made sure we used lots of precautions when being intimate. She was on birth control and I always used rubbers. I wanted to avoid a child. I have known for a long time that I do not want children. I find them annoying and they would severely limit my ability to do things I enjoy. Traveling, outdoor stuff, etc. And fortunately for me, my ex didn't have her period when she was supposed to. And it turns out she's now pregnant. She came to me and told me she was pregnant. The first thing I did was suggest an abortion. We don't live in a state where it's legal. So I offered to pay for a flight and hotel and told her I'd be happy to come with her to get it done. I have a stable job and make good money. So it isn't slash would it be too much of a hit for me. She works as a receptionist and doesn't make a lot, so I figured it would be better for me to pay. That's when she told me she was hoping to keep it and that she wanted me to help her raise the kid as his father. I have no intention of being a father. Beyond just my dislike of children, I'm not ready for that. I made it very clear that I didn't want the baby, but she kept insisting that I'd have a change of heart once it's born and to just try it out. After a long exchange, I told her that if she intended to keep the baby, I would not act as a father. I broke up with her and told her that I would pay child support once it's born, but that I expect her to respect my wishes and keep the child away from me. Since then, she's been frantically texting me, begging me to come back and telling me she'd forgive me. She sent voicemails crying. It does hurt to see, but I haven't responded. The other day, she texted me saying how she can't raise the kid alone and how I'm basically forcing her to get the procedure just by leaving. She called me an a-hole, an abuser, and a sexist, then ended a text begging me to talk again. I certainly feel horrible. I really liked her, and we had a good relationship before this, but I just don't want to be a father. I'm already bitter about the fact that I'll have to pay child support for 18 years, which will somewhat limit me financially. I also feel it isn't right for a parent who doesn't want their child to be involved. I just end up taking that pet up anger and bitterness out on a child, who is ultimately innocent, which I feel isn't right. With all this said, I come here to ask, am I the a-hole? I certainly feel like one, but I also stand by what I did. Not the a-hole. All of the moral issues aside, my man, before any name goes down on any birth certificate and money starts to flow, insists on a DNA test. Yeah, this is suspicious for her to get pregnant in the first three months while using protection and then immediately wanting to raise a child with this man you barely know. I got pregnant with my first kid the very first time I ever been intimate. Boyfriend and I barely knew each other, to be honest. We'd been dating about a month. We decided to try to make it work and we will be celebrating 20 years together next year. It can be difficult to get pregnant, but it can also be very, very quick and easy. Not the a-hole. A three-month relationship and you used protection. Are you even sure she is pregnant? Get a DNA test before paying any child support. You will need to talk to a family lawyer to sign away your rights and just pay support. This is possible. And you a woman who said she was pregnant and then got pregnant because they quit using protection. It's a manipulative trap. And my man needs a DNA test. If she claims she aborts it, I bet she's lying and was lying the whole time. Happened to my buddy when we were 19. X gives him the, I'm pregnant, we need to get back together, yada yada. She keeps berating him that he needs to tell his parents for a week or so when she hadn't told hers. He tells his parents, and the next day? Oops, I had a miscarriage. Yeah, okay. Get a vasectomy. Not the a-hole. However, it sounds like she's going to be a nightmare to deal with for the rest of your life. I was reading this thinking, why not just get a vasectomy? No one form of birth control is 100%, not even when coupled with another form. His percussions didn't go far enough. Clarifying edits. On the topic of a vasectomy, I tried. I met with a doctor last year and asked about getting one, but he refused and said every doctor he knows won't do it until you're at least 30. It's a conservative state, and while I dislike the politics, I was born and raised here, so I'm still attached to the state and have never felt the urge to leave. 
someone said I should have flown elsewhere to get one, and I guess they're right. But I just didn't think about that. And the topic of birth control, I bought the condoms myself so they were fine. Whenever we were done, I'd throw used ones in a dumpster, so I don't think she went dumpster diving. I asked her on our first date if she was taking birth control, and she said yes, and I took her for her word. Maybe foolish to just believe her, but if she was lying, she'd be the first I've met to lie about that. Most girls I've met are honest about it. I assumed she was on the pill since that's the main birth control I know, but maybe she was on something else that I'm not educated enough on. That being said, I'll follow your advice and lawyer up, plus get a paternity test. I don't know how long that will take, but whenever I get it done, I'll update here with results. Thank you for your judgment. I've been away for a bit, but I'm catching up and trying to read what I can. I'll be checking back periodically and replying to some people. All further feedback is appreciated. Last story. Am I the a-hole for suggesting calling off the wedding because she thinks the prenup isn't fair? My girlfriend, 26 female, and myself, male 24, have just found out that she is pregnant. She's adamant about not wanting to have a child out of wedlock, so we have been discussing getting married. We've been together for three and a half years. Prior to finding out about the baby, we had only talked about marriage a little bit. I know she wants to get married badly, but I'm kind of on the other wise of defense. I'm not 100% against it, but definitely not eager slash desperate to get married for multiple reasons. For one, my brother just recently got taken to the cleaners by his ex-wife and he now pays her like 10k a month, in addition to losing some of his properties. And that whole situation terrifies me, and I've never really seen what a marriage provides that makes that risk worth it. To me, it's just the same thing as being together how we are currently, but giving the state permission to be in our relationship. However, now that she's pregnant, I've been more open to it, just because I know how much it means to her. So, we've started this process, and I'm slowly realizing that I may have bitten off more than I want to chew. While me and my girlfriend love each other very much, and are compatible in pretty much every way, our ideas about marriage, the wedding, etc. seem to be a little different. For starters, for the wedding, I was thinking we each pick some of our closest people. Maybe 10 or so each, I don't know. The number can be a little flexible. And go get married on an island slash beach, stay for a week or two or something cool like that so we can have fun and enjoy it. She pretty much wants the exact opposite. Like a massive wedding in a big venue. Now, I don't see anything wrong with that type of wedding. It just seems like such a colossal waste of resources to invite every person we know. When we could instead have fun for a week or two, then get married on the beach with our closest people. It doesn't necessarily have to be the beach. I'm flexible. But I think you get the idea I'm going for versus the idea she's going for are completely two different schools of thought. She basically wants to invite every single person she knows. Like, I've looked at her list, and she's got friends she hasn't seen in years. Third cousins, literally everyone. To me, if I'm gonna spend a boatload of money, we should do it for ourselves, not people we barely know. We've been talking about compromises and making slow progress on that end, but we were getting there. She knew prior to getting married I would require a prenup. I make about four times her salary, and own a property and plan to acquire more. I had my lawyer draft up a prenup, and she has her own lawyer reviewing it. This is where we came to an impasse. Her lawyer believed a prenup wasn't fair, and we've been going back and forth making changes. I've made some concessions, but I'm kind of at a point where I don't want to make any more. While I admit the prenup is definitely ironclad, I think it's fair considering the situation. I'm taking all the risk. Why would I continue to concede on things me and my lawyer both believe are fair? So, recently we got into a minor argument over wedding stuff in general regarding the prenup slash wedding, and I was just like, maybe we should just keep things how they are? Of course she flipped. We've cooled down since, and she says she still wants to make this happen, but that I need to be more open to compromise. I feel like given the situation, I've compromised more than I already should have. I talked to my brother about it, and he said I've compromised more than enough and told firm. And worst case, you stay girlfriend-boyfriend, which is realistically probably better anyways. Meanwhile, my sister disagrees and says I'm being a jerk for not working with her more. The way I see it, why would I risk everything I've worked for when I'm not even getting the wedding I want, nor the financial protection I want, just so I can say I'm married? There's just very few tangible benefits I'd be getting in relation to the risk. 
So, am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Her lawyer believed a prenup was unfair and we've been going back and forth making changes. I've made some concessions, but I'm kind of at a point where I don't want to make any more. While I admit the prenup is definitely ironclad, I think it's fair considering the situation. You all can sign a prenup, but if a judge agrees that it's unfair while you two are splitting up, you'll very quickly find out just how unironclad they are. Prenups get tossed out all the time. Any prenup has no bearing on child support, as the court will rule that the child is not a party to it. It's impossible to say who's the a-hole without information on a prenup and relationship dynamic. A good prenup should protect the interests of both parties. This is what's baffling me. The girlfriend didn't balk at a concept of a prenup. Her lawyer thought what was presented was not fair to the girlfriend. That's her lawyer's job. If a contract isn't fair, the lawyer should advise to renegotiate. Especially since she can't contest a prenup during the divorce, any judge could decide it was bad and throw it out, like any other contract. Another issue giving me pause is OP's attitude that he's the only one that stands to lose anything. This woman can lose her life giving birth. She can lose her career caring for a baby. Women are the default parent more often than not. It's more than money. Skip the marriage and go for healthy co-parenting. Nope. Nope. I'm not having a baby by no man who isn't willing to marry me, and you shouldn't be giving that type of advice. Anything can happen to Opie, and if he drops dead and they're not married, she's gonna be down on her luck. I've seen that happen to way too many women. They've been with a man years and years, and the man dies, and the woman gets screwed over by the family. And she doesn't have much ground to stand on, because she's not married to him, so therefore she's not next of kin. Same thing if Opie lands in coma. No, just no. I'm not having a baby to someone I'm a legal stranger to. Well, unfortunately, it seems like she's already at that point. Either she compromises on what Opie wants regarding the marriage, or she aborts, or she stays unmarried. She can't force him to marry her.